Superintendents in place. That's right. Oh, yeah. Every last month. Yes, sir. I, I can't. I can't. I can only speak for Nancy. Can't speak for Edscom. And this is what I guess we were talking about Edscom side. So I would think that you would. And I think I remember about a year or so ago, Edscom had a guy, a person that was actually doing this program mm -hmm. two years ago. That's the shop now. Yeah, the shop right. had moved on. So right. Right. Let's, let's see if we can bring that full circle for the sake of our moving through the agenda. Uh, Archie, doesn't the city, uh, they umbrella our community organizations and they actually have like um, a central meeting of all the leaders, don't they? Correct, and most of those neighborhoods, majority of them are uh, kind of managed by this office. Here. So we, we get together all <laughs> the meetings and so there's a platform right there. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so would it be um, would it be advantageous for us to work closely with the human relations uh, uh, department in reaching out to these organizations and start putting out the information that we are sure of? Because I agree 100% with you all. The grassroots approach is going to be the only way to get people to come. Uh, the people who we really want to this information. Um, go ahead, sir, and then we're going to start bringing this full circle around. That's what I want to bring to Mr. Parson, the board that we need for the Edison side. Correct. Mm -hmm. So he's already in, 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 in that loop for gotcha. So uh, what we do with that is up to this group mm -hmm. for how you can send it, send it back to what uh, um, the Mr. Smith was saying. Oh, do you, do you think you could, you and your staff could get together and um, give us a, a, a plan of action or give us some parameters on how this might work and see if we can't um, get to it as expeditiously as possible? Well, we're, we're in that time of year when most of the neighbor or association are either have started back giving us or the next month or two is going to be busy with meetings. I don't see a big issue trying to get this, this issue on their agenda. They, they, I guess the challenge would be making sure we have someone that's budget from the Edgecombe County there. So uh, this office would reach out to their team board in the shop and uh, let them know what the dates are for the upcoming meetings and we can coordinate that. And I would also like if possible if, if we release some dates saying Someone will be at this meeting for whatever. A, a representative from this commission be there as well. I, can we can can we do it like this first? And this is just a suggestion. Can we call the all the? <coughs> can you call a meeting of all the organization presidents, presidents. community presidents, mm -hmm. and have them at one meeting get the information across to all of them, the same information, so everybody has the same information at one, at the same time. And then set the dates so that once we go out, at least the leader of that organization will already have the information, and you just bring in the person to to uh, uh, to be there to represent Edgecombe County and a, a representative from uh, Human Relations. Because they actually met last month, last week. Yeah, so yeah, meeting is the second Thursday, but I'm, I don't see the problem with calling you back in. And we can schedule something for that representative for Edgecombe County. Yeah. So you're gonna work on that, aren't you? Uh, we will. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, um, it's a lot happening there. God knows it is. Um, so the next item we have on the agenda is the Service to Humanity Award nomination process. And that's what we have here, right? The criteria? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this year, let's see. Is this year, you did the organization, did the organization last year, didn't you? Correct. So 
indicia? Is it an individual? Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Well, you all have that information there in front of you. Any questions about that information? Yeah, what do we need to? Well, we want to get it to y'all early because we normally need to have that sheet wrapped up by November or the late uh, December. And normally it takes a while to count up. One thing that I did want to add to kind of run it by, you don't have to you know, make a change, but normally we kept that conversation in house and mm -hmm. um, just group in, you all pretty much communicated, teaching you all community, and you came up with a name. We have never, like, publicly, publicly posted it. But y'all want to consider that for a possibility of post on the city's website or either the department's website asking for recommendations. Member comments, concerns. Um, I would like to. This, this is just uh, for your information. For those of you who uh, don't, still don't, might not know it. Uh, we recently had a uh, businessman out of the Florida area to purchase the Northwest Country Club and golf course. Um, this guy saying I was on the subcommittee, the uh, North Green Village Association formed a subcommittee. It seems like it's been five years ago now, but <laughs> like three years ago. And uh, we started looking to see what we could find. We, we approached the city, but that wasn't uh, something the city could do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so we decided, well, we're just going to reach out and see if there's anybody out there who wants to buy a golf course. And one of our members actually made a phone call uh, and uh, to Mr. Stanley Campbell to find out that he had recently purchased uh, a golf course in Florida. I forgot the name of it. Yeah, and uh, and we chimed him into one of our meetings, and the rest is kind of history. Uh, he came on board and uh, was able to submit a bid on the course. I understand him and only went back and forth for a minute or two, but this man was determined. And uh, he not only bought the country club and the uh, golf course, but he's also purchased a house in the neighborhood. So uh, he's real committed, and he had a uh, function last Saturday that was well attended. And so uh, we're all tickled to death at that, uh, the, the, way, the way that's taken shape. Um, it's it's uh, been a long time coming. But he has said this is, is going to be a semi-private golf course. Uh, it's there for anybody who likes to play golf. The will be membership is not just committed to North Green Village Association anymore. Uh, it's, it's he is. And uh, uh, we're certainly looking to really push that uh, throughout the community because I think it's going to be really good for the community. His name is Stanley Campbell. His wife is uh, maybe she a sister. Yeah, yeah, she works for the President Biden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She used to work for Barack Obama, too, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. Um, they are very charming people. I mean, that guy is so down to earth, man. Let me tell you, he's, uh, he's a joy to be around. But um, we took a look at that. I would even express that we should sort of participate and because there will be membership drives for that. Absolutely. And they support um, our folks in that area. So that's that's what we, I'm excited about this. And he has said that his vision is, you know, North Green used to host ACC oh, yeah. tournaments and all yeah. kinds of things. He, he said that is his vision to see it do the same thing again and even more uh, things. So we have taken the debt there. That's a great asset for the community. Um, that's all I have. That's all I have. Anybody have any other comments or concerns? Okay, if not, I'll we're going to move down to the Human Relations Department six.
and then there's a hosted one here like the mountain with the vent in it. Uh, the next one is scheduled for the 20, I think the one is correct, 26th of this month. Tuesday. Tuesday coming up. In, in Fayetteville, and we reached out. We always wanted to give members of the mission that if they wanted to attend, uh, to have opportunity. You guys were talking about the deadline, and who else responded? Uh, attorney. Uh, they, they wanted to attend that meeting. So that meeting will be on Tuesday in Fayetteville. Um, starts about nine. thing I wanted to add, um, and this kind of relates back to when we were talking about the fair housing program. Uh, in my meetings, I wanted to probably start sharing more information to you all about uh, the housing-related cases that we work on throughout the year. I, I won't go into a lot of detail about names and address and stuff like that, but I will want to share with you to kind of give you a general idea of the number of cases we deal with. And I kind of jot down a, a couple we may summarize. Um, you know, one thing that stood out when I was looking back for this month itself, uh, there are two mobile home park uh, situations that one of them has been going for a while that they're still working on. And then one recently, I hope, I think that got resolved uh, the last couple of days where several of the residents have been having water for about two weeks, either low water pressure or no water for about two weeks. So it's kind of working. Uh, got to get that resolved. Other cases we deal with, we get a lot of requests uh, from the community about assisting individuals to find housing. Either someone is homeless or about to be come homeless, staying in a hotel or staying with someone else. Sometimes kids are involved. A lot of times they're seeking citizens, you know, and they're just seeking out for information about housing. And I will share with them, I'm, I'm, I'm sure most of you know, affordable housing in the scenes in this community is scarce. There was someone with a crisis where, and here's, here's an example. Uh, an investor, whether it be local or out of town, purchased a, a, some units, apartments, or whatever, and automatically he has a vision for it. He wants to put this, this, this property for us with rental. And sometimes it could be four or $500 more than what current tenants are paying. And so automatically they could possibly receive a letter saying, this is the rate changes in 30 days, or either we're asking for a possession process in 30 days. A lot of situations where, uh, you know, because they're living up miles before affordable, affordable and decent houses here, for someone just to pick up in 30 days and find some, something else, and a lot of times, you know, to hopefully be as well or as better than what they have, it's a challenge. So those are things we deal with. You know, <coughs> First question a lot of people ask is, can they do it? You know, is it legal? And I'm saying in North Carolina, they can. As long as they get a property, <coughs> and plus there's a rent control. You know, the, the market determines the rent. If, if I buy a unit, I think I can get twelve hundred dollars a month for it. You know, historically, it's been rented for six. If I think I can set that rent, you 
And I, if I don't read it out, I'll be able to pull it back on. But I've already harmed those individuals that were there. And, you know, so those are, those are, those are some of the challenges. So I wanted to kind of continue to share with you all how we, we, we have those situations. We also had them on Jeffrey Road. And that's what happened on Jeffrey Road. Mm -hmm. Sure did. So, uh, landlord tenant issue. We have a number of those. I found the work with an individual today. He's getting ready to go. He has a uh, court date tomorrow morning. Uh, he's been evicted because the landlord promised X, Y, Z, did not deliver it. They went probably a month or six weeks in the water. A whole lot of issues. So we got community code involved. But even when the violation process has to happen, it still takes time. And then you got some landlords who are. When they find out what's going on, they start the process of uh, eviction. So we try to assist those tenants as well. Okay, this is what hopefully will be uh, to, to prevent the damage from being so uh, severe. And the other one is uh, just normal. From time to time, we get normal fair housing complaints about where someone has broken the fair housing law. Just want to kind of keep you all abreast of those things that we are involved with. And the last piece is that um, I think you all will be surprised when you look at the number of meetings that we, I said the staff, are involved on a monthly basis and the number of the people from the community we are involved with.
wind up in the uh, state budget was recently passed. Yeah, yeah. Got anybody else here? Heard you. Yeah. 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 The, the new state budget. Right. They they going online to see it. I was just wondering if anybody here seen it. Okay. Uh, we don't have any public here, so we, uh, well, we do have Mr. Camilla's dancer here. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes. First of all, I apologize for being late, which I know you probably don't care, but I'm just for my followers that follow me. Um, I wish I had heard more of the conversation about the school. Um, I heard one thing I think was left out. I didn't hear of Edgecombe County Commissioners when you were talking about the new guy. The guy, if I'm not mistaken, is hired through the county commissioners, not the school system. Oh, okay. and, 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 and I know that to be fact because I'm on a committee, and we got a meeting on Friday to get an update where we're working with some lawyers about the, the, the situation. Okay. And so um, you got to understand that this is driven by the county commissioners. That's one thing. Um, <laughs> and, and the other thing is, I wish back in the day when I was recording, we had YouTube. Because the, the, the uh, way I put my videos, those people are out of business. But the first meeting at the Carolina Gateway is is online, and all the other meetings, the meetings at Fairroof, I got all those dating back to when they had the one over in uh, Princeville, came to a county commission, I mean to a city council meeting that day, and then rushed over to the county to the uh, school board meeting over in Princeville, and Reuben, I think Richard and some more came. But it's some information out there. Research. I just did something today. I, I said the word of the day is research. Sure. Research. Yeah. You don't have to wait till they come to you. My thing is you need to go to them when they all have a meeting so you can have the right people there, not just one person, and get the information. But if you go to my website, type in the merger on YouTube. You'll pull up the means that were recorded by others and myself. It's out there. The information is out there. So you can bring people in all day. That's fine. But the information is out there. And we were talking about that, Camilla, a moment ago, about how much information there is out there. Right. But uh, the the um, the elephant in the room seems to be how do you motivate people to go get it? Is, is it uh, people don't know how to find it or exactly what's still missing? Because you're right, that, that I'm sure that, that information is out there. But it's just uh, been a, a, a bit of a task getting people to, to go to it. Um, I don't know if you were here when we were talking about getting the community leaders together. I heard some of them. Working on pulling those community leaders together mm -hmm. and start sort of a grassroots, it sounds like a grassroots initiative to get more people involved by going through the local community organizations. And hopefully that will um, generate a lot more interest than, than we've had so far. Any other comments? Uh, it's right at five. You all know I like to shut meetings down now when this. One hour was gone, baby. <laughs> okay. In one session, Mr. Jones, can you bring, you might have already done this, I'd like to have someone in from the planning committee for the city and give us a five year plan as far as there's a lot of activity that's going on around us. And uh, in, you know, we're talking about what's going on with Wilson and all things. So we got some things going on too. But I'd be interested in knowing what are those plans with a short or long term plan that's for. Okay, if there is no further business to claim our attention, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. All right. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much.